This morning, rushing flood water shutting down major roads, leaving no way in or out across much of Southern California. Hillary is the first tropical storm in more than 25 years to move through the state, breaking all kinds of records. Los Angeles recorded its rainy summer day in at least 150 years. Palm Springs got a full year's worth of rain in 24 hours. Its 911 system is still down. There were mudslides in the San Bernardino Mountains. Look at that. And now the storm that did this is moving north. CNN's Stephanie Elam joins us from Cathedral City just east of Palm Springs. Stephanie, what a muddy, icky mess behind you. I have a nice pun for you, John. It's called the meeting of the muds. Take a look. You can see the two different kinds of muds. Believe it or not, I'm standing on a road, a major road, in and out of uh, the Palm Springs area here. This is what's going on. They're starting to clean it up now that the sun has come, and come out. But look, there's two cars over here that have been stuck since we were here in the darkness. And now you can see how high that mud is up on their wheels. And then over to the right, there's this little uh, Volkswagen. Some very respectful, thoughtful individual just went flying through the mud on the wrong side of the road to get onto this side and completely splashed our photojournalist, Mike Love, who's now completely covered in mud. Um, but that's how far she got. That's where she's ended up here. These are the reasons why they're saying schools are closed. These are the reasons why they're saying people will not be able to get in and around and into Palm Springs because out in the distance there, I just walked all the way up there, that would be towards Interstate 10. There are Mack trucks, there are cars twisted off to the side off the road up there. It's completely blocked right now with vehicles and mud and running water that is still finding its way off the road and down off into the wash. All of their washes are full. Uh, when you look at this now that the sun has come up, it's almost unbelievable how much of a mess is out here. And when you put your foot into some of this mud, they just came through and plowed here so it's not as sticky, but you know, a couple of times I thought I was gonna lose my boot because it's so sticky. And that is what's trapping these cars out here. And think about it, they were doing this in the darkness. And you can see up there what the mess it has left behind. I sent in some video to show you of just how bad it is out here. It's unbelievable now that the sun is up here, John. It really is gross. And we saw that front end loader working behind you. You know, I've seen snow plows. I'm not sure I've ever seen mud plows before. And that was like mud plowing instead. <laughs> also mud plowing in August. Just think about that. This was the rainiest they have ever had in one day in Palm Springs for 100 years of records. And it's very odd to have that much rain in Southern California, let alone in August. All right, Stephanie Elam, keep your boots on. My advice, duct tape works wonders if you need it. Thank you very much for your reporting. Okay. Here we go, here we go. Let's get the latest now from Cathedral City, actually right where Stephanie Elam is reporting. Cathedral City's fire chief, Michael Contreras, is joining us now. Chief, thanks so much for coming in. Stephanie Elam, from where, where she is, as the sun's coming up, she's seeing just the muddy mess that is all over some of the streets there. What are your crews, what are your crews seeing out there right now? Yeah, we're, we're right in the middle of that right now. Uh, we're in all areas around that, that muddy area uh, and that intersection right there that had a combination of what we call a debris flow. So a large amount of mud and sand moving into that area, which is what trapped uh, the cars there. We were able to uh, extricate and rescue seven people there. So now we're going house to house and making sure that the people that want to get out can get out. Uh, we've just called in a, a dozer, a bulldozer, uh, and they're going to go and clear those neighborhoods so that those people can get out. But right now they're trapped for all intents and purposes. Talk to me about that, because the mayor of Palm Springs, which is, you know, nearish by, was saying that they, they don't even have access in and out of Palm Springs is completely blocked right now. What, how would you describe the situation as the, wa as the storm itself has moved past? What is now left behind that you're seeing in Cathedral City? Yeah, there, there's a lot of destruction, right? And Mother Nature um, clearly put her mark on us uh, over the last 48 hours. And, and that's what you're seeing with that mud. And, and it's a combination of mud and sand that makes it really hard to get through. The, the water, for the most part, has dissipated. Um, it, it's drained off, it's, it's moved 
out into the drains. Um, but what we're really dealing with is that excess mud that is a lot like quicksand. Uh, it's real heavy and takes a lot of effort. So if you're elderly um, or you know you're a young person, it's really hard to get through that. And so that's that's our main focus right now is to clear the roads. Um, right now we have the I-10 freeway, which is the main thoroughfare through both Palm Springs and Cathedral City. Uh, our off ramps are on um, both theirs and ours are limited because of the mud. So it's really about clearing the roads and getting access and then assisting Caltrans with getting the, the I-10 open in both directions. Absolutely, and, and Chief, we had seen reports that the 911 phone lines were down in your city. Is that still the case? What's happening? No, you know, what, what happened there is uh, there was no 911 calls missed. Um, there, there was uh, with the carrier, they, they had an issue with flooding, but you know, we prepare for this uh, all the time, both fire and police. And we were able to transition uh, and we sent that out and we moved those lines over to what we call the business lines. Uh, it's a different number, but it still comes through the 911 system. So uh, again, we were prepared for it. Uh, that we, we do routinely. Yeah, I mean, that that's good to hear. You, you had mentioned that you think that folks are essentially trapped because of this mud, sand mixture mess that's left behind. I mean, what's your best advice for people right now? You've got crews out, people are gonna need some re need rescued today, um, but what's your best advice for folks? Yeah, right now, if they need anything, they don't have it. Well, let me back up. It's the same thing that we told people coming into the store, right? If you don't need to be on the road, don't leave your house, get the supplies you need, and stay warm in your house. That's kind of the same thing we're saying now. If you don't need to get out, let it give us some time. We'll get the, the tractors, we'll get the manpower, uh, and we'll clear the streets. And then that way it'll be in a lot more organized fashion. But our biggest concern is that our people are still out there, um, uh, both from all city departments, from public works, to facilities, the building department that um, may have to red tax in buildings. And when we're out there doing our job and, and people are in a hurry, um, it puts us at risk. So, you know, if they can, just stay home and give us a little time and then we'll go from there. Chief, thanks so much for jumping on this morning. I really appreciate your time. This is a brand new video out of San Diego, the city facing such an inundation of water, it was shooting out of manholes at one point. CNN's Mike Valerio is in San Diego with the latest. Mike, that's a wild to see the, how much water was shooting out of the manholes there, but what have you been seeing and hearing this morning as the sun's coming up? Yeah, you know, Kate, that picture, those images certainly are crazy, but I think that we are all feeling, Kate, a sense of shared relief in San Diego and the coastal communities up and down the Pacific Coast that we seem to have been spared from the brunt of the disaster, the brunt of the damage that is really belonging to the desert communities about 90 miles to our north and east. Palm Springs, the Coachella Valley, even farther north towards Death Valley and the Nevada border. I think also what civic authorities are telling us, they are uh, saying that they have that sense of relief because of A, the capricious whims of the track that this storm took and B, the sense of preparation, the muscle memory from the atmospheric rivers that we had earlier uh, this year and that is due to all of the extra personnel. There were not one, but 10 water rescue teams positioned up and down the San Diego River from Mission Bay close to SeaWorld all the way up to Interstate 5, the 5, making sure that everybody was okay, rescuing nine people overnight, Kate. So I think that just San Diego County, for example, getting a whopping 30,000 people to sign up for their emergency alert systems, texting people when something would go wrong, when roads would be flooded. There is a shared sense that this is the new normal. We got to get used to this kind of weather, and people are certainly rising to the occasion here, Kate. Yeah. Mike Valeria in San Diego for us. Thank you, Mike.